What's up, fungal? Oh, wait, let me try this. Oh, what's up, fungal associates? Oh. Gee, Welcome calm. to Completely Arbitrary. Alex. The podcast about trees. Oh. Calm down. And other related topics. Ugh. I'm Alex Croson. I'm Casey Clapp. Casey, why am I being so wrathful today? Because you're aggro, buddy. Wow. Chill out. My nope. very convincing. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, it was very convincing. Everyone's like, God, Alex is really legitimately upset right now. Uh, it's almost like I'm in an intense emotional state of anger, also known as rage, that's oh. characterized by a strong, uncomfortable, or non-cooperative response to a perceived hurt or provocation. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Uh, so I, I should, uh, I should ask Alex. I don't know if this is obvious. Uh, are you feeling wrathful right now? No, Casey. I was putting on a role. Oh, I see. Acting. I was acting. Incredible. It's Thank just you. incredible. Thank you, Casey. Uh, what, what is the reason? What is my reason for? acting wrathful today well if it is on theme uh-huh. it would be that an it, insect has just bit you somehow no no casey oh. <laughs> it's not that at all <laughs> well then i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's because today we are continuing our seven deadly stems i see and we have chosen a tree that just by the name just by looking at it you know it's wrathful. You know, Alex, I'm so happy that you said that because I agree entirely. Yeah. This tree looks ex- like when you see it, you think that it's going to it's going to come after you if you come after it. Totally. The good news is, rather I shouldn't say the good news, the fun news mm-hmm. is that it goes actually a step beyond oh, wow. what you see. Because this is another episode of Ant Talk. <gasps> Wow. And I think this one's even just a little bit better than the oh. last one we did, which of course was the trumpet tree, Cercopia, uh, a fabulous species from the tropics. This one is from Mexico and a couple other species of bullhorn acacia. I'll say down in the tropics. You say this one's better. It's it's got many tiny shoes to fill. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very good job. Well, Casey, you said it. We're talking about the bullhorn acacia. That's right, Alex. Vichelia cornigera. Cornigera. Yes, which is a lovely species from mostly Mexico, but it also goes a little bit further south. Okay. And we're talking about explicitly this species. There are a few others that go by the uh, the common name bullhorn acacia, mm-hmm. but this Vichelia cornigera is the one we're talking about. Lovely. Casey, before we get to all that, all that, all that ant talk, all that bullhorn talk, did you know that this podcast is supported fully by the lovely people who listen to it? Oh, Alex, I did know that. Yep. And if you want to be one of those people, if you want to be a premium member of this podcast, go to arbitrarypod.supercast.com. That's A R B O R T R A R Y pod.supercast.com. If you are a premium member, here's some of the things you can look forward to. Premium, excuse me, premium. Thank you. Bonus audio episodes. Premium. Just just calling them premium doesn't make them, you know. (laughs) I think it does. I think it does. Everything else is just normal, you know. Normal Cone of the Month Club versus (laughs) premium Cone of the Month Club. You get premium video episodes. We just started a new series called The Seed Pod where we sit down with tree-related people and have lovely conversations. You get to see videos of those. Also, Casey, Mm -hmm. the crown jewel, the Cone Club. That's right. Where every month we have an artist cool hip great artist yeah the kind that you wish you were but you just are always like they're so cool like uh thomas kincaid Uh, (laughs) exactly (laughs) god i wish we could get a thomas kincaid cone we have them illustrate a cone a conifer cone a different species every month we get them printed on stickers locally here Mm -hmm. in portland oregon with sticker ninja and we ship out hundreds of cones to you with a fun little cone card that you can collect. I love seeing Casey. I love seeing the way people have collected these. Yeah. They'll like put all of them on one, you know, guitar case or something. Yeah. Or journal or like I've seen people make like, um, 
Somebody made like a leaf. Oh, you know how like you have leaf oh, yeah. scrapbooks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that with the cones? Yep. A friend of mine puts it on his rocket box on top of his car. Perfect. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so if you want monthly cone stickers and, uh, and access to our entire back catalog of cone stickers, become a premium member at arbitrarypod.supercast.com. After the break, we'll be talking ants. We'll be talking bullhorn acacia. Mm-hmm. If you ask me, it's a bunch of bullhorn Wow. Now, you're being very wrathful right now for no good reason. Well, I can think of one good reason. What? This is Seven Deadly Stems on Completely Arbitrary. Welcome back. To completely arbitrary. Today we're talking the bullhorn acacia. Casey. Alex. Now, this is our wrath. This sure is. And episode. God, I'm so just, I just, this has to be, this, I feel, I feel proud of this one also. I feel proud of all these ones. The, you love all these, your children. Yeah, these are good children. Uh-huh. Uh, these children especially <clears throat> horrifically good at being wrathful. Oh. Yeah, like it's pretty violent, actually. That's exciting. Have you mm-hmm. heard um, the the specific regional British pronunciation of wrath as wrath? No, I haven't. And it's not like that easy, like switching an a ah to an ah no. in, in British. It's like, they spell it differently? No, they just, it's it's like a Can and calm. scone. Have you heard like scone? No. Oh, I think it's one of those things. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, who, no. what's the like? Anyway, I'm uh, against it. <laughs> Casey, let's imagine that you and I, hey, can we be in Mexico? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. In fact, that's a really good place to be. Well, I, I listened to you. Uh, <laughs> well, I heard what you said and I reacted to it. <laughs> let's imagine that you and I are walking through, hmm, I kind of want to be in Mexico City. Ooh, oh, all right, yeah, that's fair. That works. Maybe an arboretum mm-hmm. in Mexico City. And we come across some bullhorn acacia. Casey, mm-hmm. let's ID this tree. All right, so this tree stands out from afar. Wow. It is a deciduous acacia tree. Now, I say acacia, though that is uh, officially just the common name. It is Vichelia, uh, which used to be in the genus acacia, but they split those off. And as you're walking through, and it's uh, let's say it's in the drier part of the season, you're going to see a tree that looks like it is covered from head to toe in spikes. I said that we were walking through Mexico City. Yeah. De Efe. But no no uh city forester in their mind in their right mind would plant these no. trees on a sidewalk. Not even not no one ever. Not it, even all. It's like handing out free swords. No, but that's <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's it's a little bit like a uh, um a baseball bat with nails and spikes sent through, yes. you know. Uh, but that's okay. You don't need to be walking on the streets and have this be planted. Uh-huh. It will find its way to grow in like a, a dry kind of uh, vacant lot kind of thing. Mm, okay. But you'll also see it kind of in the highlands and anywhere that is kind of the dry, very classic Southwest Mexico kind of acacia habitat where it's very dry with these sp- Spiky, spiky things, and I would say probably you'll find it more in the rural areas uh, mm-hmm. or more natural areas outside of like the big city because of Mexico City's like metropolitan AF. When you first walk up to it, you'll be like, wow, oh my God, that tree is completely covered in spikes. And that is because it, of course, is named after these giant stipular spines that yes. cover the tree. Stipular spines are these tiny mostly historically for other trees they're these tiny little thorns or spines that are essentially modified stipules which are little bits of leaf right at the base of the petiole Hmm. so these will come out in pairs and these have been modified to be big and quite thick they are vicious looking they look like the size of a like a banana yeah, I think I don't think they can quite get that size, but especially like uh, it's kind of funny because the tree itself only maybe gets to thirty feet tall. Oh, you wow. know, it's not a giant tree. So in comparison, when you look at a picture that doesn't really put anything in perspective, and there's no leaves on it, the, the they look huge. Yeah, like, they really do look like banana size. That's completely accurate. And I will say, when I when I was picturing bullhorn, mm-hmm. I was like, 
that's probably has to do with the spikes. And I imagine sort of a curved, you know, yeah. bull's horn as I know them. Uh-huh. But this is like, uh, what is it? What is that? Texas longhorn? Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like that species that has the whole, the bull, uh, excuse me, it has like a unibrow of horn. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like they come up and then out. It's Or it's like connected in the middle of their head. It's yeah, all exactly. It's like one piece. Yes. They look just like that. They do. But Alex, did you know that they can also be way different. This was actually kind of something that blew my mind. I was reading through a paper that did a huge big study on it and he had some pretty spectacular photos. They can actually curl around the uh around the stem and look kind of like uh wow. what what was that Disney movie with the the evil uh witch lady? Oh, Maleficent. Maleficent, yeah. yeah. It looks like, like her, her horn. Yeah. yeah. And then there are other ones that look like perfect V's. Wow. And then others that look exactly like the horns you're talking about. Yeah, like wow. The, the Texas longhorns. Oh, that's cool. That's They're some crazy. Great, great botanical diversity. Yeah, exactly. Well said, Alex. I rolled my eyes at myself. I know, which is why I laughed. So <laughs> it's a uh, so that's the first thing, of course, you're going to see. Like I said, it's kind of a medium-sized tree. Maybe gets to 30 feet, a little bit taller if you really let it go. It's got some normal-ass gray bark, brownish bark. Don't even worry about it. You don't care. I don't know, Casey. What? I, th- I think the bark is kind of interesting. You do? Well, it's like sort of like copper-colored from, from a few of these I'm seeing. All right. I guess that's fair. That's kind of cool. You just kind of look normal to me, I guess. You know that copper bark I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like yeah, like brass, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it kind of just has this like shiny, like it's not really shiny. It's kind of a hard description. Yeah, but it's yeah, like, it's almost like glossy-ish. Yeah, it's or not me- matte. Let's say that. Uh, it's like roast beef when it's like <laughs> you kind of, sh- you know, yeah, like keep, a trout's belly. It's like it looks just like a trout's belly. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I really appreciate your descriptive prowess. <laughs> I just want you to know that. <laughs> but well, I've always I will, thought it was pretty normal. I will say, like in comparison to the rest of the tree. Uh, okay, yeah, maybe that's the thing. I'm just like blown away by the rest of it. Right. Uh, this is what I think of. Let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. Well, so mostly the good stuff is those sweet ass horns. You Amazing. Know? Uh, I'm uh, this is one who listens to metal and throwing up the horns all oh, the time. Oh yeah. Well, this is my tree. Never seen you do that. Yeah, I don't do it often. <laughs> <laughs> I do it mostly ironically. Sure, sure. Whenever I see something crazy happen, I'm like, oh yeah, uh, metal. That's sick. <laughs> Um, uh, so Casey, I'm, I'm noticing one thing about these horns. Uh-huh. Uh, they've got a hole. They do, Alex. And I'm assuming that is like, uh, a, a, a portal to, for the ants. It is. It's a portal. <laughs> it is a portal for the ants to get inside of this. Yeah. So, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, uh, in more depth, but oh. ants, uh, specifically what we call the... Acacia ant, which is funny, and I have to think about it all the time because when you're referring to the ant, it's an acacia dash ant. When you're referring to the tree, it's an ant dash acacia. Wow. <laughs> which is, you know, annoying to say the least. I think it's quite fun. <laughs> you do? Language is so interesting. I, I, it is. I think it, I, yes, but it also is just like, ugh. <laughs> Could you guys not have come up with just like something else? Each individual horn has a little tiny hole in it, as you noted, and that is created by a founding mother, essentially, a founding queen for an ant colony. Oh, my gosh. So she would fly in from another colony. She would land on uh, this tree and either find a hole that's already been dug that doesn't have anything in it, or she would etch it out herself. And they bite through with their very hard pinchers. They go inside, and then there's kind of this pith that's inside that's mm-hmm. not very intense and they can just kind of clean that out mm. hollows it out and then you now have a dimatia which is a little house for all of your ant family a little hobbit hole exactly how lovely so she lays a couple eggs and then uh those eggs become sterile workers as all ants do these are all sisters and they are all completely sterile they're just these drones all they do is just go and work mm. what happens I'm imagining is, like a uh 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 I guess a monastery with nuns. Oh, uh, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Imagine that, but like if all the nuns uh, just were uh, like machines, I guess. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty intense. Like a cool horror movie. Yeah, like I think Suspiria. it would be, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what they do is uh, they live inside these little teeny tiny holes mm-hmm. inside these fairly large bullhorn stipule thorn spines. Cool. 
Now, what they do on the rest of the plant and how they interact with it is quite interesting. You'll note that we haven't talked very much about the leaves here. Yes. Well, the leaves of this tree have a couple different very specific interesting parts that betray their relationship with these ant species. Oh my god. So they're alternately arranged mm -hmm. in bipinnately compound leaves. I love the leaves. I thought you would, Alex. I truly did. I'm so happy to hear that. Bipinnate compound is goat. Uh, Yeah, and these are fantastic. Yeah, they're good. Ones. They have 3 to 14 Pinnae, which is individual uh, kind of the first order leaflets. And each one of those has 15 to 40 pairs of opposite leaflets on it. So, so that's the, the bipinnate, right? Sure. It's a leaf made of leaves. Exactly. Made of leaves. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. A leaf made of leaves, made of leaves. Precisely. Oh, I love it. And they ended up getting a uh, pretty good size, these leaves, but each individual minute leaflet is teeny tiny, mm. like maybe uh, a couple millimeters across and maybe a centimeter or so long. Wow. And at the base of the petiole of the whole leaf, there are between one and eight what's called extra foliar nectararies. Oh my God. Have you heard about this before? Uh, no. Well, I might have brought it up. I think I used the same term, but I might have not. Whenever we talk about the cherries, because cherries also oh, yeah. have a very similar little gland right oh, on sure. their petiole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is essentially the same thing. It's, it's well, say the word again, extra foliar. Nectarary. Okay, well, it, I can surmise what it is. Okay. Little, little, little sweet sack growing yeah. off on the outside. That's exactly right. It's yeah. just kind of this little gland that just puts out a little tiny bit of sweet, uh, sweet sap, sweet nectar kind of stuff. I bet I know who's eating that. Yeah, you know exactly who's eating that. Interesting. But, Alex, have you ever had nothing but sugar and realized that your body is betraying itself? Yes, Casey. Exactly, Alex. We've all been there. So what, of course, you're going to need to survive is a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat. You need all those extra those extra things that help actually build your body and mm. give you strength. Build a nice, build you a nice, tough, strong kid. You know yeah. what I mean? So in order to get that little bit of protein, at the very tip of each one of those little teeny tiny leaflets is a small cylindrical growth. Wow. It's orange in color. And it's, it's maybe a, a millimeter or so long. Like, it's very tiny. But compared to an ant, it's just the right size. And these are what's called Belshin bodies. Oh, my gosh. Now, you may recall when we talked about the Cercopia, the trumpet tree, mm -hmm. they had what's called Mullerian bodies. Do you remember this at all? This, not, is, this is a while ago now. Yeah, not really. Well, Mullerian bodies, Alex, are the same kind of little growths. They're these little, like, uh, protein, lipid, fat-filled little deposits hmm. that on the Cercopia would come from the base of the leaf. So essentially, at the very base of the petiole, all these little things would kind of just exude out from these glands. And those were Mullerian bodies. Wow. Now, a Belshian body is the same kind of thing, but it comes out at the very tip wow. of the leaves. Okay. Both of them are delicious to ants. Okay. This they, is, this is, uh, this is, they balance the sugar exactly. that the ant is getting. Precisely. Wow. They are what creates the other side of that complete meal. That is 100%. All of these things provided by the tree, wow. and it's 100% of the diet of these ants. That's incredible. Yes. So, that is what our tree looks like. Can we talk about the flower? Oh, gosh. Yes, we can. Honestly, I forgot about the flowers. Like, everything just completely is is so much cooler. Like, the, the leaves and the thorns. I forget about the flowers, Alex. I don't know, Casey. These flowers are... They are. It, like, they are crazy. <laughs> I'm so happy you brought it up because I, I forget about them, but they are also kind of weird and unique. They look like, um, uh, what, are, like what is it? A sugar or gumdrop? Do you remember that the candy? Like a gumdrop? Sure. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, a, a small little cone that doesn't have a tip on it. They look just like those if they were like pulled out a little bit. Like I can't figure out a good wow. descriptor for the shape of the flowers. But they're like these really tight and uh, yellow compact little inflorescence that are like long cones. Like they almost look like a, a lollipop or like a, 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 a ice cream pop. Corn like I dog. don't know. I mean, I, I see I see like a purple, a small purple zucchini. Okay. 
like dipped in corn dog batter. All right. Yeah, that works. That's great. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> and then rolled in like, you know, yellow dots. Yeah, they're really strange. Um, and they're just like very tightly packed little flowers. So these little guys uh, come out and they will turn into these like snow pea, sugar snap pea sized and mm. shaped pea pods, which are the classic pea pods because this is, as an acacia, as a vichelia, it's in the pea family. Fabaceae. Fabaceae. Well done. My favorite family. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's what those little guys look like. Cool. So they're they're fascinating little trees, and again, there are a, a bunch of vichelia and acacia, and so this is just one species of a few that look kind of very similar to this, and they're all mm. very closely related, but like I said, we're talking specifically about our bullhorn acacia. I do want to say one thing about these horns. Yeah. I, I, <clears throat> I did a little bit of research. Uh-huh. And I can't find anything supporting this. Oh, oh. So maybe if somebody if somebody knows for real, please reach out. Mm. But I look at these and I'm like, man, I bet you the indigenous people of the area where these grow uh-huh. broke off that horn uh-huh. and used it as like some sort of flute like instrument Ooh. or carved it because it has a natural hole in it, which yeah. you need for, a, you know, a flute. That is a very interesting idea. I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's probably not true, but I bet you. I don't know. I bet you there's nothing, not nothing to it. Well, there is certainly not nothing to it. There is another species uh, that's actually from Africa hmm. that's called Vichelia drepanolobium. Wow. And that is called the whistling thorn. Ah. Uh-huh. Because they use the, the thorns for flutes? Well, it's actually not that they do, any of the uh, the peoples in the area. It's mm-hmm. actually that just because there's so many holes in it, they, they're another Vichelia species, of course, and they, instead of having big, long, thick bull horns the way ours does, mm. it actually just has a very big swollen base. So it kind of looks like a gourd with a sharp point coming out of okay. it. But they they aren't gigantic, but they're big enough that the ants would actually uh, do the same thing, drill holes in, clean out that hollow space, live inside that little uh, swollen base of the thorn. Mm-hmm. But as the wind goes by, the wind hits all those holes and ends up making the the whole thing sound like a whistle. So you're not far off. I think there's a there's a least reasonable evidence to support that whistling can take place. If I were not a person of the internet age and I heard that out on the plains, uh-huh. I would think it was like a screaming ghost. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it would freak you out until you find it. Then you're like, wow, this tree yeah. makes sounds. But then you look closer and you think, I want to help that tree make sound. You You touch any single part of the tree and the tree gives you its wrath. Because Alex, this is why we're talking about wrath and the bullhorn acacia amazing and this is why i think that your theory is not far off Hmm. but probably not correct (laughs) because in order for anything humans included to get that thorn off of that tree in order to do anything with it whistle or just step on or throw away or get really mad at Mm -hmm. you have to fight the wrath which are these little teeny tiny ants known as pseudo myrmix ferunginia wow these are again acacia ants and there's a bunch of different species that are all kind of uh underneath the same umbrella as acacia ant but in the genus pseudo myrmix so you look at this thing and you're like yeah I can clearly see the weapon. It's those giant horns. <laughs> exactly. But the real weapon uh-huh. are the, the little swarm of ants. Exactly. Mm. So these ants and other species of tree, which if you don't remember, they're called myrmecophytes, mm. which uh, myrmecophyte is specifically a tree or a plant that is in some way relating in a symbiotic fashion to ants. So one of the one of the big things that uh, that I found with this is mm. that um, a lot of people have said, well, is this like a, is this just the ants have found a nice place and they're just taking advantage of these big thorns and they're sure. having a good time? Yeah. Eh, maybe. So some people uh, did some research on this, mm. and this was one of those things where when you look at it, you kind of like make the assumption, but then whenever you make an assumption about kind of the intentions of an animal or a plant that's when scientists are kind of like ooh, it's a little bit dubious we can observe that it's happening but 
can we say for sure that the ants are protecting the tree or mm. something like that? So they ended up doing a bunch of research, and there's this big, long paper that uh, basically said, yes, we are showing emphatically that this is in fact the case this is not just a situation where an ant species happened to find a nice thing that worked really well for them and the tree just survives and lives like that right this is a case where the symbiotic relationship goes both ways where we already talked about the fact that the plant provides all the nutrition for the ants from start to finish with these lipid and protein filled little belchian bodies mm -hmm. to the extra floral nectaries that produce all this delicious uh sap essentially sugar water for the ants well, the sentence you just said was like uh, a 17th century sext <laughs> I love your uh, I love your extra floral nectaries <laughs> and your lipid filled <laughs> Belgian body oh uh, yeah oh <laughs> Jonathan till next we meet <laughs> three months later when the post finally gets there well so everyone was like okay well can we we, we see this maybe that's just convenience you know maybe, yeah. maybe those were already growing there and then the ants just you know happen to find them sure well it turns out as if the the tree devolved that way and then found and then the ant found yeah it. Okay. exactly or you know <clears throat> some other unique situation where you just find these two things that happen to work very well together sure so they ended up showing that the tree is protected and the ants like as maniacs will go after anything that touches it wow and i mean touches it and it kind of blows your mind if it is a cow it comes over there and starts eating a little bit of the delicious uh, leaves because I should note, the leaves are deficient in bitter alkaloids, which mm. is something you'd usually find in uh, these species of acacia and vichelia that essentially make it very bitter and, and distasteful to animals. It's a way that the plant will keep any of the herbaceous animals around from eating. So this species basically didn't do that so instead wow. of putting in their their defenses in their actual leaves they just contracted with these uh with these ants wow and they said hey great we're gonna actually just create these other belgian bodies these other things entirely our leaves are gonna taste delicious but if we give you these things and we let you live in our house you're gonna protect it and the ants just absolutely went ham it's their mercenary army exactly so you touch you you touch it the ants will immediately know they are patrolling night and day wow like up to i think it was either a quarter or a half of the colony is out at all times just patrolling looking for trouble just watching if there's a sucking insect that lands on one of the leaves you're dead how i shouldn't say dead i i, I think they just get a lot sure <laughs> they might until survive. they die <laughs> uh what's the response time i think it's immediate okay and not only is it immediate but it's like a swarm because ants are famous for giving out pheromones mm -hmm. that then call in other ants or other ants smell and then they immediately go rush in to That's help right. out their buddies wow yeah so oh my gosh it's yeah it's like a it's it's a situation where their wrath of the plant is such that if you touch it and one ant sees and smells and finds that there is another insect, a, uh, a caterpillar of an insect, mm -hmm. um, a large mammal, a small mammal, a, another vine, any other plants that a, happen to get close. A person. Literally anything. Mm -hmm. The ants will just go ham and just bite and sting you. One entomologist that I read about said his hand got bit a few times and it swelled up for a couple hours. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so these aren't ants that are just like, I'm just going to get you. These are ants that are like, they pack a punch. That's amazing. It's a legitimate wrath of this tree where it doesn't want to be touched. It doesn't want to be looked at. It uh -huh. doesn't want to be even thought about because as soon as you do, ants are going to, ow, ow. I just got bit, Alex. <laughs> I just thinking about this tree. It came all am, the way over here. I am oh starting to feel a little itchy. God. Uh, you know, I, I will say like, and maybe this maybe this go, should be said in my review, but don't you think it's a little bit of a hat on a hat? Oh, you mean with the with the acacia? Yeah, it's yeah. like you already have you already have this threatening appearance. Yeah. Do you really need an, an army of ants at your disposal? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that that is a very fair question, and honestly, I think yes. If it was just, <laughs> if it was just the uh, the bull horns, uh-huh. if it was just the, the the stipular spines, yeah, then I would say, well, this is a well armed tree. This sure. is a tree that is basically saying, don't get close. If you do, I'm going to poke you. Or if you're good enough, you can get by my defenses and I'm just going to shrug it off. It does go a step further. Exactly. It goes one step further. And that is, A, why it's a wrathful tree. Mm -hmm. Because it actually responds in kind and and bites you. Wow. You feel the wrath of this tree. But it's also unique in that it protects it from two different things. It protects it from really big stuff, like that the ants really wouldn't do that much about. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if you're a cow or you're like a goat or something, goats don't care about right. literally anything. An ant could bite their eyeball, and they would yeah, just yeah, and they would blink. Like, oh, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. So I think that in many occasions, the uh, the tree has to be protected from bigger, like really tough mm. animals. Okay. which is the thorns. But then if that happens, you will feel the wrath of the tree, meaning that you're still going to get bit and it's still going to be upsetting and you'll probably not do that again. Sure. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't just fight the sieging army with catapults. Yeah, exactly. You have to send out soldiers. You got to send out other stuff. So I, men I, on the ground, I think this tree kind of, uh, I think, it, I think it takes it to the next level. And I think that's like, I think it is a hat on a hat, but I think it's a hat on a hat for particular reasons yeah. one hat is for audience a the other hat is for audience b sure yeah makes sense wow that's amazing yeah you know what else is amazing about this uh this plant it's hmm. kind of a kind of a sidestep hmm. there's actually an eight-legged creature that also depends on this tree is it a spider it is a spider wow i learned about a jumping spider oh no that uh and i say jumping spider it's just kind of they do jump but they're also like just these teeny tiny very smart like wide-eyed very good hunters hmm this, as if that makes. <laughs> hey, calm down, calm down. But this they're is just also one of the most intelligent predators. So, <laughs> yeah, it's true. If it's, what I love about this antho, or about specifically jumping spiders, what I love about these uh, jumping spiders actually mm-hmm. is that they are like, like mind-blowingly intelligent. Mm. There's a, there's one. Uh, was it? it's David Attenborough special? I think it's on Life, uh, where he talks about um, this one species that actually hunts other spiders and like it knows how to hunt and changes its tactics per the spider that it's hunting. Wow. Incredible. But like, that's like some human level shit. Oh my God. Like it is, uh, in the, in the show, David Ambrose, like, and this spider is a genius. Uh, seriously. It's insane. I know intelligence is relative, but like, that's fucking smart. It gets up to a level that you're uncomfortable with. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yes. This, like uh, pigs and oct- <laughs> octopus. Yeah, right? It's exactly right. Like, you you know that that spider could solve an equation. It just doesn't care to. <laughs> Who'd rather go hunting? <laughs> but so the thing is, this uh, this species of spider is called Bagheera Kiplingi. Hey, you know, if you really want to make tracks, you put that pig and the spider together. Oh, yeah. You've got a Charlotte's Web situation. You do. Yeah, this is Charlotte's Web situation that they're they're going to end up like basically solving a discourse on human like uh, happiness or something. Uh, sorry, that was not worth interrupting you. <laughs> I think it was. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, this uh, this spider, uh, again, it's Bagheera Kipling Eye. Okay. Is a vegetarian. No kidding. One of, if not the only known examples, uh, certainly uh, back when this came out, uh, this article that I read was, I think, in like 2016. Uh-huh. So it might have been, uh, there might be others that people have found. But it's a teeny tiny little spider. It's probably just about the same size as the ants and avoids the ants like the plague. Of course. Because you, A, you have to. Yeah. Um, and it's also like, it would get completely killed. It's about the same size. So an ant would just look at it and then just like throw its life completely there. Yeah. So the spider is not really <laughs> doing a whole lot. So these spiders are very good with eyesight. Like I have mm. seen some jumping spiders just here in town because we have a bunch that are native to our area. And you put your finger in front of them and you move your finger and they'll just watch your finger and they'll oh. rotate their body. Like they're, they have great eyesight as like hunters. Wow. So these species will walk around, they will avoid all the ants, and they eat the Belgian bodies, <gasps> and they eat the nectar. Incredible. And every now and then, 
every now and then you'll find it crawling in and stealing a uh, a larva or something like that. <gasps> wow! But it doesn't really do it. Uh, I the majority of its diet are plants and not by accident that's what it chooses to do amazing casey so it's wild they call it a quote vegetarian spider up to 91 percent of its diet is belgian bodies wow isn't that crazy this is truly an interesting tree it really is it has a spider that lives on it that of that is kind of like uh living in the attic and like avoiding the yeah. actual like troops that are completely covering the tree uh-huh. live in it and cover it night and day like a castle totally and then apparently sometimes there are wasps, which I have not figured out why the wasps, the wasp nest, it's on a, a closely related tree, but with the same ants and does the same thing. Mm. The wasp nest does not get eaten by the ants. And I don't know why. Hmm. Is it because wasps will fuck you up if you come near them? I don't know. I don't know. I could not find a good reason as to why that's the case. But Although, I mean, 30,000 ants could easily take down a wasp. Yeah, wasp you would think nest. so. You would think so. Apparently, um, uh, again, to add in a whole new thing, army ants, which are these the big, scary, famous ones that like travel in droves of millions across the forest and oh. just like completely take out everything in their path. <laughs> It's it's a horrifying idea. Huh. I love watching documentaries on it, though. I have to say, I'm a big fan of ants. I yeah. really am. Okay. Uh, apparently, um, army ants would just go in and completely raid these uh, these wasp nests. Wow. Which makes me wonder if the army ants also go raid everything on this tree if they come across one. Yeah. Which means, like, when you think about the politics of what's going on... <laughs> Like, it's crazy. And wasps and ants are very closely related. They're all in the same really? family. Or, yeah, uh, same order, I should say. Okay. Yeah. In fact, if you look at them, they look exactly the same, except for wasps have wings. Sure. I can I can totally see it. Yeah. So, wow. I, I just, I love the idea oh of, like, a spider, like a jumping spider being like, what is going on? Yeah. And seeing an army ant invade and destroy a wasp nest while the resident uh, battalion of ants also gets overrun because the army ants are literally like uh, the the cons. What yeah. am I thinking? The Mongols. They're unstoppable. Yeah. And then uh, and then everyone goes away. And there's just this ant being like, or the spider's like, <laughs> Covering its mouth. <laughs> Is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just hiding underneath the bed, hoping it doesn't oh, wow. get found. I, a couple of times we've we've told stories, and I've been like, oh my gosh. If there are any like fiction writers out there looking for inspiration, oh yeah, this is like. The next, the next Game of Thrones, the next fan, ba- oh, hot fantasy series, easily needs to look at ant behavior. Yes, all ants, <laughs> all behavior, just like that. And you know what? The next time they make a movie called Ants, mm. we need to like expand our uh, geographical understanding of our ants. Yes, because there are some ants that just do the most wild things I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, both both ants and Bugs Life are both focused on like a very kind of basic worker ant type. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, hierarchy. Yeah, they don't have like big stings and honestly, they're a little bit like uh they're a little bit beta, I guess. Yeah, is the only way they're to disposable. Put it. They're like red shirts in Star Trek. Yeah, they get to, they get destroyed by uh, grasshoppers. Could you imagine grasshoppers on a bullhorn acacia? Oh, yeah, get fucked up. Well, destroyed. the whole lesson of that movie is that uh, you know, in the end, they realize that together they are f- miles stronger than uh, the okay. grasshoppers. So really, uh, a bug's life is just like the uh, it's it's an allegory about the evolution of ants learning how powerful they are. Yes. God, beautiful. Which ants would know anyway because they're evolved that way. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Casey. Yeah. That was our discussion of the bullhorn acacia, an incredible tree, an incredible ant, an incredible life we live. <laughs> it's time <laughs> to give our review. But we got to do so after a break. We'll be right back with our wrathful thoughts on the bull acacia here on Completely Arbitrary. Seven deadly stems. Welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. That was our discussion of the bullhorn acacia mm-hmm. and the acacia ant. The ant acacia and the acacia ant. Isn't that fun? I love it. It's great. Casey, uh-huh. let's give our review of this tree. Here's how it works. We're going to get some final thoughts, then give it a rating of 0 to 10 golden cones of honor. As our resident 
expert. We'll begin with you. Thank you, Alex. The word expert got kind of caught in my mouth there. Yeah, well, I, I hope that's I, not a bad omen. I I don't think it is. I think I think sometimes it's okay for you to look at me and and, and question if I am in fact an expert. <laughs> so thank you. I do see you. You know, like on your game at times, like around other people talking about trees. Oh or yeah. Like I've yeah. seen you like give a present, not maybe not give a presentation, but like talk at length, very seriously about trees. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh, Whoa, that's Casey. That's my friend. Casey. Aww, that's so strange. Get out of here. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks Alex. That's really sweet of you. I imagine it's the same as when you come see me play live. And, oh yeah. You know. I no idea how you memorize what to do with your fingers every day. Oh my gosh. And then make it up. You just like a couple weeks ago, you played the, uh, the Olympic theme song on guitar without making a single mistake and knowing exactly which buttons to press. And normally you do it on a completely different instrument. Simple ear training. I just, I hate that. <laughs> it's just impossible to do. Um, by hate, I mean I'm very envious of it. But that's a, that's a sin for that's a different That's a different day. episode. <laughs> so the bullhorn acacia. I think that this is probably one of the cooler trees out there. Yeah. I personally love that it has these giant thorns on it. Uh, stipular spines, we know. I also love that it has made this cooperative symbiotic relationship with ants. I think ants are the coolest. I think they are scary. I think they're fun. I also think that they are just like wildly more intelligent in a way that's like un uh fathomable to humans like mm. they are a hive mind kind of thing yeah where like we have our individual brain with all of its individual cells ants i think represent those individual cells it's wow I, they're crazy interesting like i think they're fascinating ants are a, a big inspiration for like sci-fi alien cultures oh like, yeah yeah, in, yeah. Lot, in so many sci-fi books that the the invading alien culture is like a hive mind of you know super intelligent, small creatures, you right. know, like yeah. swarm. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think it's accurate. I think that is a very fair idea. It's obviously quite successful. It's scary. So the fact that there are, th there's this kind of relationship, A, I think it blows the Cercopia out of the water. Like, okay, maybe not out of the water, but it certainly like really shakes it up a bit mm. because the other one, yeah, they live in it, they do that, but it's not quite as specialized, I think, as this, in yeah. my opinion. It is it is specialized, but I think this goes just like a step further. And also, I don't know for sure, but I feel like I just get the sense that these ants are a little bit more fanatical. <laughs> I don't oh, know, though. I, I get that. So, a um, cult like Exactly. Yeah, a little cult like and a little like um, I I I just don't know. I think they I think they love their job a little too much. They're holy warriors they, for this yeah, tree. They really are. That's exactly. That's a perfect. That's a great description. So, I think one thing though I don't really like about this tree is it doesn't really have a grand kind of uh, kind of stature to it. it kind yeah. of grows up. It kind of looks a little twiggy, and then it dies pretty quickly and grows back. I personally think that this tree would really be something if it got like. 200 feet tall and 50 feet wide and was covered head to toe in ants. That's the future I want to see. Well, yeah. Like that would be incredible. Like <laughs> like different zones that you don't go mm. because you're not of that colony. You know what I mean? You got to start small with some grassroots campaigns. If this is go. the future you want, <laughs> yeah, Casey. This is, that's true. Uh, let the ants live. <laughs> so I, I think I'm going to give this tree right down the middle a 7.7. .7. Okay. Because I love that it is just a violent tree mm -hmm. to some extent, but also a part of me is like, hey, you know what? Take it easy. Life's not that hard. Uh, yeah. It's maybe overcompensating just I a think touch. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, uh, you should share your leaves. I get that, Casey. 7.7? 7 .7? 7 7.7 7 out of 10, Golden Cones of Honor yeah, I, for the Beholden occasion. I was thinking like, you know, a cow, like let the cow have some leaves. You've got, mm -hmm. you've got like hundreds of thousands of them. Yeah. Just... Like be cool. Yeah. You don't have to, it's so, it's so, um, it's a little like you need, you need to go to, you need to go to therapy. Maybe try better help. Bullhorn Acacia. <laughs> yeah. Um, who hurt you? Yes. Who hurt you? Bullhorn Acacia. <laughs> like this is fear aggression. Like you must have some trauma that's been not dealt with. So you're lashing out at the people closest to you. Like exactly. this poor cow. Yeah. You totally get it. Yeah. I really appreciate that. You just called, uh, a cow, a person. 
yeah. Well, to me. <laughs> um, all right, Case. The bull acacia. Bullhorn acacia, Alex. Oh, excuse me. The bullhorn acacia. Yeah, what do you think of it? Bullhorn acacia. Mm-hmm. It's got big thorns. And... See the bullhorn acacia. Oh, uh, yeah. Is Red this, hot uh, chili peppers. It is. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't place it, and I was like, oh, yeah, cold play. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. It's like the cold play of California. <laughs> Wow, that is really <laughs> apt, actually. Wow. This is... Uh, the hottest take we've ever had on this show. Coldplay is just the London version of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> oh, um, I'm not going to comment. Okay, here is my review of the Bullhorn Acacia. Does it have... Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll say... I'll, I'll do it like this, Case. Yeah. There are some things I love about trees. Mm-hmm. Some kind of, like, hallmarks of what makes a tree... Uh, special in yeah. the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them is bipinnately compound leaves. That's very true. You do like those. Yeah. So this already is like, whoo, nice. Yeah. Another is fruit. This tree does not... It does not have fruit. Um, no. Does does not uh, deliver on that promise. Yeah, you can't eat it though. Uh, some of them are taken and, and uh, sold around in, in markets down there. So they yeah. are edible. Okay, fine. Another is... Uh, I love a tree that fights back. You do. That's very true. It's one of my favorite things about you. And this tree, holy shit, does it fight back. Yeah. I mean, it, it fights back to the point where it needs to hire bodyguards to give that little extra fight. Yeah. It's like mob protected. <laughs> it really is in a literal sense. Uh, yes. I also love a tree that has a close relationship with an animal. Mm. I just think that's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Even trees like this that are like vicious. Yeah. It's like, Your I don't relationship know. is toxic, but. Right. You guys have been together for 10 years. That's yeah, an accomplishment. You, you, guys, you guys do have love. Um, so <clears throat> this tree has a lot going for it for me. The only thing it's really missing is stature and fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I won't take too many cones away for that. I think it's fair. But I got to give this bad boy. I do mean bad boy. Bad to the bone. Nine point zero. Wow. Golden cones. Nine point zero golden cones of honor. It That's is true. Outstanding. A great tree, Casey, and a great story. Oh my god. I, I would go as far as to say a great episode. <sighs> Shucks. There's still time to fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> Casey, that was our discussion and our review yeah hey are you well situated now i am now well situated <laughs> thank you you're welcome it is time for a game in fact a very stemful game oh 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 casey this mm-hmm. is my confession how it works what is your sin my son (laughs) you what is your stem my son (laughs) you are the world's first treast Uh, (laughs) and people come to you with their confessions (laughs) i am going to play the stemmers i'm going to come to you with my stems um, this sounds like a video game. And you are going to... <laughs> all right, so it what does... you have to do is you have yeah. to fight off all the stemmers, okay? <laughs> They're going to be coming at you with everything they got. Use God's holy power to smite them. <laughs> uh, it's just mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> you, I will come to you with my stems. Okay. And you will prescribe how I can how I can uh, ah, make okay. it up to you know your your uh, your your, tree your God. say seven graces uh, hail Marys <clears throat> yes um, uh, I I didn't I'm not Catholic yeah none of us know what we're talking about okay great cool. <clears throat> you're gonna you're gonna prescribe uh, you know <laughs> diagnose me yeah I'll diagnose you and then I will prescribe a remedy uh, based on your Sin. Yes, <clears throat> exactly. Stems. Okay, Casey. All right, Alex. The confession booth is open. Ooh. It doubles uh. as a kissing booth, ironically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it just depends on the hour, honestly. <laughs> but it's still the priest. Oh, God. We can't make any more, we can't make any more jokes like that, Alex. Okay. That's going to take us down the wrong path. All right. Um, <laughs> here. Uh, come in, my child. <sighs> 
Forgive me, Father, for I have stemmed. I know, I know. Tell me your stem. Um, so my neighbor mm. has this uh, tree. All right. In their backyard. I am a tree. I I'm familiar. And um, I don't I don't really know what kind of tree it is, mm-hmm. but it was growing into my yard. Ah. Uh, and mm-hmm. um, I I kept asking them to prune it back. Um, because I wanted to put a trampoline there for my kids mm. in that corner where mm. the tree is. Okay. And I was getting needles and cones and shit all over my trampoline. Interesting. So they wouldn't do anything about it. So I took God's justice into my own hands <sighs> and I poisoned the tree. You poisoned the tree to and, death. And now the tree is dead. The tree is dead. Yes, Father. Do you feel bad? I feel bad that he caught me doing it, mm, mm-hmm. but I don't really feel bad that I did it. Ah, all right. Well, but the tree is dead. The first, I, I understand. This. And I'm, I'm now I'm getting even more needles and cones and shit because now they're dead, and so they're just falling off yeah. on the tree. All right. Well, the first thing is, um, you're gonna have to plant several trees in repentance. Okay, in my neighbor's yard? In your yard and your neighbor's yard. Oh, my God. And probably your other neighbor's yard, too, because what you've done, Alex, I assume your name is Alex. I didn't ask, but they they put a register. Jeremy? Jeremy. Sorry, Jeremy. It's okay. See, what you did is you didn't only affect your neighbor's tree in your yard, but you also affected all the other yards around. Everyone else who didn't have a trampoline, they had maybe a shaded plant. Their house was shaded. Their seat was shaded. Some nice space. Uh, they could look out and they could see this beautiful tree, this beautiful green tree that's now brown, dead. Yeah. And now it's also dangerous because now some of these branches are going to fall. Oh, shit. And I have to ask, do you have other corners that you could put your trampoline for your kids? I do. Do your kids even really want a trampoline? Yes, it's all they talk about. Is it going to be good for them or is it going to be... Of course. Is it going to be good for them? It's good exercise. It gives it gets them off my off my back. All right, all so right. So I can go drinking with my friends. Well, first thing is, pay attention to your kids more. Oh, okay. Second thing, you're going to need to pay to get that tree removed. You also what? should apologize profusely if they caught you. There's no way around it. Okay. Finally, you're going to need to replant trees because if you don't, and if you don't do any of these things, they're going to sue you. And if they sue you, they can get three times the value of that tree. Really? Treble damages in timber states like Washington and Treble Oregon. Treble damages? Yeah. So what you've done is actually three times worse than what you think you've done. What is this, a Screamo band's lead singer? It's exact. Yes. <laughs> it's thrice as bad. Ooh. Oh, I was I was thinking treble as in their voice oh. damages. Oh yeah, All but right. also <clears throat> um, anyway. Well, how what, how much is it going to cost to get it removed? Well, Do I have to pay for that? You probably will. Unfortunately, my oh. son. I shouldn't say unfortunately. You did this. You earned this. I know, father. This is your repentance. Okay. Trampolines are stupid. How much does it cost? Uh, probably thousands of dollars, my son. Thousands. Mm-hmm. Depending on the size of the tree, which if it was big <laughs> enough to cause you some kind of trouble. <sighs> okay. Plant trees. Water them. The green earth needs you. Now more than ever. Thank you, Father. For you are a stemmer. Can I go now? You may. Thank you, Father. Mm. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get oh, out of sorry, the booth. Sorry. Get out of the booth. <laughs> wrong, wrong booth. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Mm. Next, uh, next, vi- excuse me. Next, uh, <laughs> next stemmer, come on in. <laughs> yes, enter the booth. <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Forgive me, Father, for I have stemmed. Uh huh. Tell me your stem. So I know this is gonna sound a lot like the last guy, uh-huh. but it is different. Okay. I uh, I saw this this truck drive by. Mm-hmm. that had a bunch of yard equipment on it, mm-hmm. and uh, it said thinning mm. on the side of the truck. My God. And I have a tree in my out, you know, next to my driveway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's really big and thick mm-hmm. and full and thick. Mm-hmm. And I thought, hey, maybe I'll try that. Mm. 
Mm. Thinning, so t- you mean? You were th- you're yeah. going to thin your tree. Yes. So I talked to the guys. Mm-hmm. They said it would cost about $6,000. It's a big tree. Okay. And um, I had them do it. And then uh, the next windstorm, um, <sighs> the tree f- fell over. I know. I and, know. Uh, crashed into my neighbor's house Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh, killed their cat. Ah, the cat. It's always the cat, isn't it? Well, thank you. uh, Yes. Thank you for, thank you for being honest. You're welcome. Now, what you've learned here is clearly that thinning your tree Hmm. is actually worse for its long-term health instability. Now, a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people would think that the, the good book says, Thin out your tree so that air goes through the tree. Mm -hmm. Rather, air should go around the tree. The tree uses every branch, every limb that it has to damp all of the different, to dampen all of the different forces of wind that come around it. It's one unit. It works together. That's interesting. However, what you've done is you've split its unit into many small individual things, individual branches and those individual branches actually are more likely to get more drag on them and break off, wow. or the tree's not as able to handle the dampening. So you weaken the tree by thinning it, my son. I understand. I never wanted to break a unit. I need you to go and be an evangelist. I need you to tell everyone you know oh. about the dangers of thinning. Tell them the good news that your tree <laughs> is just fine. Okay. Just fine well it fell over remember their trees not yours oh, you oh. you destroyed you destroyed your tree okay what do i do about the cat the house oh uh just um you know another cat will come they oh yeah it's like um it, it's like a it's like a vacant a vacancy a new new cats they usually they'll find their way don't sure. don't you worry about those cats. it's like menudo <clears throat> they just get replaced by new people <laughs> It's exactly right. It's okay. exactly right. Thank you, Father. Yes. Also, while you're uh, while you're at it, make sure to uh, make sure to uh, make sure to uh, plant another tree. Oh, okay. Just it's for good. Just for good measure. Where the old tree was. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But the uh-huh. stump is still there. Yeah, that's all right. You'll be fine. Right next to it. Oh, okay. Do mm-hmm. I need to have the stump removed? Mm, yeah, yeah. You can do that, but you don't have to. Okay. Good luck. I kind of just want to leave it there. You must plant a tree. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you. God, stop it. Jesus, people. (laughs) All right. Last one for the night. What can I do? Tell me your stem. Hello, Father. Hello. Forgive me, Father, for Mm, I have sinned. I understand. You stemmed? Forgive me, Father, for I have stemmed. I understand. I've done a little bit of both. (laughs) Well, I've been around the block. All right. So um, I have a... I I run a uh, popular... um, Mm Mm-hmm vegan restaurant in mm. town okay mm-hmm. it being vegan has nothing to do with the stem mm-hmm. uh, but it's well loved and people like the food and um somebody came in a few weeks ago mm. and they just seemed like they were in a bad mood mm. and mm-hmm. we were our service was great but they ended up yelling at one of my servers mm. and not leaving a tip and kind of storming out making a scene and then they left a yelp review mm. Um, and it was one star and I was there the whole time. I saw the whole thing. I know that they were in the wrong. I understand. Um, so I, I hate to say this. I, I found him on Facebook and, uh, he is the curator at the big arboretum. My God. In my city. Uh huh. And, uh, so in the middle of the night, a couple nights ago, I, Took a bunch of um, Tree of Heaven seeds from <gasps> my backyard. You fool. And I went up to the arboretum and I gorilla planted about 18,000. <laughs> 18,000. Trees of Heaven in this guy's arboretum. You're a monster. And then I left a bad review for the arboretum. <laughs> this is my stem. Okay. Thank you for sharing your stem. This is my confession. I, um, I'm taken aback. Uh, the first thing is, in order to repent, you need to remove your tree of heaven. The tree of heaven that is making the seeds Done. that you found in your yard. That's great. All right. Excellent. Hey. This, the second thing is, oh. you need to plant 18,000 not tr- tree of heavens elsewhere. Okay. You don't need to say anything, though, because you know what? 
They're going to be just fine. Should I gorilla plant them like I did the other ones? Yes. In every vacant planting space across the city. What should I plant? You should plant a tree appropriate for that location based on the city's rules and regulations and approved trees. Can you give me a couple ideas? Yes. Uh, I don't know how to do that research. I can help you. I can help you. Baker Cypress. Okay. Little Leaf Linden. Okay. Silver Leaf Linden. Silver. And many others. Many. Uh, is that a species? Uh, no, it's a, it's oh, a, you're it's sa- a okay, type of. It's many, a, it's a, yeah, right, you got okay. it. I can't believe that you did this, um, and well, I, I don't think you're supposed to say that. I honestly, I, I thought you were better. I came here to not be judged. You are not being judged. You are being saved. Okay. All right. So as your triest, uh, the other thing that you're going to need to do is uh, always let me eat for free at your restaurant. I accept. All right. But drinks you pay for. Half price. Deal. You're saved. I don't deserve a kiss. <laughs> I, I've not been kissing anybody. <laughs> that was my confession, Casey. <laughs> uh, Alex, uh, just in case you didn't know, I had no idea what you were going to say on either of those. No. <laughs> and honestly, I thought they were going to be a little more stimful sometimes. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to say, Alex. That's <laughs> pretty Jesus. lukewarm. That's fine. Uh, Casey, <laughs> that was... This is my con- confession. Uh-huh. It is time for our completely arbitrary AMA. If you want to ask a question on the podcast, support the podcast. Become a Tremium member at arbitrarypod.supercast.com. Go over to that AMA tab and ask away. Casey. What do we got today, Monsieur Alex? This week's question is from Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Or should I say Guten Tag? Oh, wait. Because hmm. Rachel was recently in Germany. Oh, I've heard of that. And saw these weird spheres slash balls of twigs and branches in some of the trees. Interesting. They weren't squirrels' nests yeah. because Rachel is familiar with those in Minnesota. And my uh, Rachel's German friend said that they were called witch's broom. Interesting. What is up with these things, KC? Mm. Thank you so much, Rachel. I'm very curious about this. So, namely... Um, a witch's broom uh, is a it's a growth in a tree that happens for a few different reasons. Mostly, it can all be boiled down to there are fewer nutrients in water getting out to a stem beyond a certain like choke point, so to speak. Hmm. And so all of the growth is much tighter together and stunted ah. so normal 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 then all of a sudden at, at some point for no good reason everything's very tightly packed together and it's all very much a small kind of dwarf variety of what you'd expect normally okay so they're going to grow the, the leaves and stems are going to grow no matter what yes but if the stem doesn't grow out fast enough well, it's it's all of the above. So the leaves are smaller, the stems are smaller, oh. tight, they're packed together. Everything is kind of, um, it's a dwarf variety. In fact, a lot of the different varieties and cultivars that we have that we call dwarf varieties uh-huh. of plants, they're all dwarfed because of this, uh, this same kind of process. Okay. So many times it is a mutation where... For whatever reason, this bud had a weird mutation in it. So everything that comes from that bud, all the new shoots also have that weird mutation. Mm. They just have some strange thing. On a bud by bud basis. Yeah. Sometimes they're a twig. Other times it's like an infection that gets in there. So like a fungus causes some issue. And then everything after that. Other times I've seen it happen where the top of a tree was girdled. Like it was in Seattle actually. And it was a big cypress tree, uh, a fall cypress. And it turns out that someone had put... Tibetan prayer flags way up at the top and then forgot about them or they, you know, decayed away over years, who knows, but they never actually took it down from the very tippy top of this tree. Mm. So as the rest of it grew up, it started to girdle and there was this normal tree, normal tree with this teeny tiny, like very, very bunched up tree at the top. Okay. It was a very big question. Then one time it flew off, uh, broke in a storm, and then uh, some arbors figured it out. Interesting. Meanwhile, another issue, which I think is actually what's going on here, is mistletoe. Ah. So mistletoe can cause witch's broom at the end beyond the mistletoe down the normal twig because the mistletoe is taking the nutrients mm-hmm. and the water and all those uh, uh, different, uh, I guess it's, it's, well, yeah, it's taking all the sugars and everything as well. But- 
Everything beyond that, oh, further down the twig, down the stem, is all stunted because the mistletoe is taking all the, all the, you know, essentially nutrients, water, and everything. So it stunts the tree's growth. Exactly. Wow. Now the thing is, so though, that is that is not which that's not called witch's broom. No, that is witch's broom. So oh, the mistletoe all, thing is called e- witch's broom. Exactly. So mistletoe is the causal agent. Ah. What you see is witch's broom. Gotcha. Now, having said that, Alex. Mm-hmm. They are generally not perfectly spherical. Okay. But what is perfectly spherical and is evergreen and looks like some weird new growth coming out of a tree is actually the mistletoe itself, especially in oak trees. Okay. You also get a lot of mistletoe that does create this weird witch's broom um, out here in our conifers Mm. in the West, but... If it's on a deciduous tree out in Germany, my guess is that you're actually looking at circular, the actual plant mistletoe okay. in an oak tree. Okay. That's what I think. And they're going to be green, these yeah. mistletoes, because they're evergreen. Exactly, yeah, because they, okay. they're, they're evergreen. They uh, Some of them aren't even uh, green, but mostly they're not out here. Uh, but those are ones that don't even have the ability to photosynthesize. They mm. only take all their nutrients, sugars, and everything from the plant. Wow. So, but Speaking often of you do a, see that. a close relationship with the tree. Yeah, right? very much so. Yeah, parasitic in this case, though. Very cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Rachel, for your question. We what hope an, we answered it. What an interesting question. And uh, uh, Auf Wiedersehen, as they say, Casey. Auf Wiedersehen, they do say that in Germany. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, as I said, if you want to support this podcast, ask us questions, get audio, video, bonus content, get monthly cone stickers, get live streams. Basically, um, have your hand in our back pockets. Mm-hmm, that's right. Join Completely Arbitrary Tremium, become a Tremium member, arbitrarypod.supercast.com. Casey Clapp. Alex Croson, what a day. Wow. Should we tell people what happened? No. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Completely Arbitrary. We'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Completely Arbitrary is produced by Alex Croson and Casey Clapp. Our artwork is by Jillian Barthold, and our music is by Aves and the Mini Vandals. If you want to support this podcast and become a Tremium member, head over to arbitrarypod.supercast.com. Thanks for listening.